Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this little plump and cute mouse that you can see Melba here with. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this cute and chubby little toy mouse, you'll need to choose your yarn. Now, I use this yarn quite a bit for Toys for Melba, and she just somehow loves the texture of it and the way that it works up into toys. So it's a 100% wool. It's in this kind of mild effect, which um, I love the way it works up. It's probably about a four to five weight. And like I said, it's a, it's a non-toxic 100% wool. It's an Ecotex yarn, so it's been tested for any harmful substances. And obviously that's important when you're making something for your cat that they're going to chew and, you know, have close to their mouth and, you know, they could swallow something toxic. So you need to be aware of the yarn that you're using. And this is perfect, like I said, for making toys for Melba. She just loves the texture. I've made balls and... Um, mice and all sorts of things out of it and uh, yeah she really loves the loves the way that it you know I don't know it must be a feel for her or something but she just loves it so if you've got a similar yarn a 100% wool it, it'll work up really well into this into this project but you can use any yarn that you like obviously the the higher weight yarn that you use you'll get a larger mouse the smaller weight yarn you use you'll get a smaller mouse but you can adjust the size of this mouse and we'll talk about that as we move through you'll need and this is just optional but you'll need a color for the ears the inside of the ears and I'm choosing this this is a wool acrylic um, pink that I'm going to do the inside of the ears and the little nose with and I've got this little bit of scrap yarn here that I'm going to um, just embroider a couple of eyes on with so those are just optional you don't have to you know change color you can just use the one color and you also don't have to embroider any eyes or nose on that's absolutely optional as well you can just have the the mouse shape so you'll choose your yarn and then um Actually, I should just say these are both, that, this one would be about a three weight, this would be about a two to three weight. So, you know, just if you've got any scrap yarn, it's ideal for this project. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your, your yarn, and I'm using a 3.5 millimeter today, and that's quite small for this yarn, but it still works, and it's about the right size for this yarn. Okay, so you, you know, you choose the hook that corresponds to the size of the mouse you want and your yarn. I've got a pair of scissors and I've got two needles actually. I'm going to use uh, one for some finer work. This is a, got a, it's a finer needle with a sharp point and this one will be for, um, you know, my less fine work. Still got quite a sharp point and it's got a large eye so I'll be using it mostly for this yarn. And this other one for these two, for doing the little sewing and embroidery. And I've got a some stuffing, and it's just a it's just a standard sort of toy stuffing. Uh, it's just a synthetic, non-toxic toy stuffing. But you can you know you can stuff with yarn scraps, you can stuff with cotton wool, you can stuff with you know whatever is non-toxic and works for you. So I think that's all that you'll need. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the techniques that you will need to know to make this project. Okay, so here's the one that I've made previously, and I've used the same yarn, just a different color. So we're going to start this on the body, and we'll start down at the tail end, and we'll work our way towards the nose. Now to make the body, you'll need to know how to make a magic ring, and then we're using um, amigurumi techniques to make the body, so single crochet and single crochet decrease. I'll show you how to... Uh, do the amigurumi decrease if you're not familiar with it and it's it's just optional but it gives you a um, less conspicuous decrease so it just makes it a little bit tidier so as I said we'll start at the tail decrease down to the nose then we'll make this tail and to make the tail you need to know how to make a chain how to do single crochet and slip stitch and we'll attach the tail and the little ears you'll need to know how to make a magic ring 
single crochet in the round increasing to the size of the ears that you want and finishing off with the main body color if you want to now changing color here is just entirely optional you can make this work however you want to make it i think it looks cute with the little pink in the inside of the ears but it's entirely optional you can just make it all in the same yarn and we'll be of course attaching the ears with just a little bit of simple hand sewing and then at the end if you want to you can embroider on a little face and I've just done this very stylized little face um, my mouse almost looks like more of a bat from this angle but you know either way it's cute so you can make a little nose and I've just done that um, with some simple embroidery using the pink yarn and then I've just used my darker yarn the black for some eyes so again, entirely optional. If you don't want to add the nose and the eyes, you don't have to bother with that. But um, yeah, it's a fun little project and pretty quick to work up. So let's get started. Okay, so as I said, we're starting at the tail end of the body. So take your yarn and you'll make a magic ring. Now this is how I do mine, but you know, you, you do things your way if you've got different ways to do them. Now, if you need to brush up on any of these basic techniques before you get started, then please do. I don't run through them in any slow, you know, great detail. I assume that you've got these basic techniques under your belt and, you know, that you can, you know, generally follow along. And there's a few few techniques that I'll show you along the way. In this pattern, I'll show you how to do the amigurumi decrease. But otherwise, I'm assuming that you've got these basic techniques under your belt. Okay, so you have your magic ring, and then we're going to place six single crochets into the magic ring. So I'm always using US terminology, so single crochets. And once again, I apologize to my British friends, but I learnt, I actually learnt in French, and then to crochet, and then I had to translate that into English, and the US terminology just seemed to sit in my brain better. So. I learnt, um, after the French, I learnt in uh, US terminology. So I apologise to my British friends. One, two, three, four. So six single crochets in the magic ring. Okay, so place your six in there. And then you'll close up your ring. And you will slip stitch across to your first stitch. Now, actually, what I should have said here... And I should have said this at the beginning, but if you want to stitch mark your last stitch, especially if you're a beginner, that might, that might be quite useful. Make, you know, just mark your last stitch here so you know when you get to your last stitch. Now, I don't tend to do that because I'm really familiar with working in the round, but if you want to, you certainly can. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here because I'm going to I'm going to mark my stitches as I film this. Just, you know, just to make it more easy for you if you're not familiar with working in the round. So, I'll be back in just one moment. Okay, so we've slipped stitched to join and I'm going to place my stitch marker in that very last stitch. Okay, and then we're going to work in the next round, so round two, and we're, as I said it, uh, before, we're just increasing in the round, simple amigurumi technique. Okay, so chain one here, and then, so the stitch that you've slip stitched into, you will, will ignore that, okay, that doesn't count as your first stitch what I do and and there's a couple of ways to increase them around but the way I do it is I count from that last stitch that I've marked one two three four five and six so I ignore the one here that I've slip stitched into some people work into that stitch okay so if you're absolutely new it can be a little bit confusing because people work slightly differently in the round this is the way I do it this is the way that works for me Okay, and if you've got your way of working in the round, then please do it your way. But you'll ignore the stitch that you've slip stitched into, and then you'll start working in the next stitch, which is, for me, the first stitch. And you're going to place two single crochets into that stitch. And then in each stitch, all the way around, placing two single crochets in each of those stitches, 
So you've got six stitches at the beginning and you'll end up with 12 at the end of this round two. So go ahead and place your two single crochets in each of your six stitches and I'll meet you when we get around here. Okay, so I'm back around here. I'll remove my stitch marker and that's my last stitch. So I'll place my two single crochets in that last stitch. And then I'm going to ignore my chain. So make sure that you don't, you're not working into the chain and you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch. Now if you need to count backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12, then do that. So there's my chain, I don't know if you can see here, there's my chain from the previous round, or it was from the beginning of this round, and then I'm going to slip stitch into that last stitch. So if you need to count, count backwards, okay, and then slip stitch into your 12th stitch, which is, you know, your first stitch. And then you'll mark that last stitch. Okay, so that's round two. Now we're going to continue increasing in the round, so chain one, moving on to round three. So ignore the stitch that you've just stitched, slip stitched into, and then you're going to work your first stitch, your first single crochet into that next stitch so one single crochet in there in the next stitch you're going to work two single crochets one and two in the next stitch one single crochet now why my work is a bit tight is because I'm using a slightly slightly uh, slightly small hook for my uh, yarn but that's the way I want it I want really nice tight stitches okay so we've placed our one single crochet and then the next stitch is two single crochets one and two. So we're going to repeat that one single crochet and then two single crochets in the next stitch all the way around. So you'll finish off on two single crochets in your last stitch. That's if you've counted correctly. So continue on, finish out this round three and I'll meet you once again at the beginning or the end of this round. Okay, so I'm at my last stitch in this round three, and I'll place my two single crochets in there. One and two. Oops, split yarn. And two. And then I'm going to ignore my chain, and if you need to count, then count backwards and slip stitch into your first stitch. And then remark at the end there. And that's the end of round three. Okay, so from here on out, you're going to make decisions about how big you want your mouse to be. And that will depend on the yarn you're using, this, you know, the size of the, your hook, and the size of the mouse that you want for your cat. So if you want to stop increasing here, you can. And what you will do for the next three rows is you will make three rows of one single crochet in each stitch. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make the same size as I made for this little mouse. So I'm going to go for one more round of increase. Okay, so if you want to stop here and go for your next three rounds as one single crochet in each round and you're making, um, you know, a smaller mouse or you've got really chunky yarn and you, you don't, you know, you don't want your mouse to be too big, then you'll stop increasing here and you'll do your three rounds of single crochet, one in each stitch slip stitch at the end, chain one, and then, you know, go to the next round. I'm going to increase for one more round. So chain one, and then ignore that stitch that you've slip stitched into. And to continue increasing, this time we're going to place one single crochet in the first two stitches. And then in the third stitch, two single crochets. Okay, so just increasing in the round in the amigurumi method or in you know in used in lots of different projects this increase in the round it's a really it's a really basic and fundamental technique to have in your skill set how to increase in the round so in the first round we have our x number of stitches second round we increase with two in each stitch the next round we increase in every second stitch and then in the third round we, uh, sorry the next round the fourth round we increase in every third stitch Okay, and an increase just means two stitches in one stitch. 
Okay, so you can increase to infinity doing this method. You know, you can make a very large, a large circle. So in this round, we're increasing in every third stitch. So continue all the way around. So you'll end up with 18 stitches in this round. I'll keep going to the end of my round one, two, three, four, my round four, and I'll see you around here. Okay, so I'm just placing my last stitches in that last stitch. So at the end of this round, you will have 24 stitches. And I'm going to slip stitch across to my first stitch and mark that last one. Now, you can continue to increase further if you want to. I'm not going to increase from here, but you know, if you're just continuing the increase in the round and you want to increase one more round or perhaps even two more rounds, depending on the size of yarn you're using, you will in the next round, round five, you'll increase in every fourth stitch then every fifth stitch, every sixth stitch, etc. Okay, so if you want to continue on, then you certainly can. Okay, so I'm going to chain one here. And for the next three rounds, we're just placing one single crochet in each stitch. So go ahead and complete three rounds of just one single crochet in each stitch. And I'll see you once I've done that. Okay, so there I've finished my three rows of just one single crochet in each stitch. Now, I the, I went to an increase uh, to 24, so I've got 24 stitches still all the way around. Okay, now you might have a different number of stitches to me if you've decided to not increase as much as me or to increase further than I did in the round, but you've got your number of stitches, okay? So... We're going to start our decreases from here. Now you might have, you might need to decrease a bit further than I do. If you've increased further, you'll need to decrease further. If you've increased less, you'll decrease less. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. But if you're coming with me, we're going to decrease in the next round. Okay, so it's it's very similar to the increases in terms of the sequence. Uh, we're going to because we our last round of increases was increasing in every third stitch. This round of decreases will be decreasing in every third stitch. Okay? So we'll just do the same thing. We'll ignore that stitch that we've slip stitched into and place our first single crochet in that first stitch. And then in the next stitch, one single crochet. And with these next two stitches, we're going to decrease. Now you can just do a normal single crochet decrease if you want to. But if you want to do the amigurumi decrease, then the way that that's done is you just use, pull up the front loop. So just use the front loop of that next stitch and then go straight away inserting your hook into the front loop of the next stitch. And then you'll work a single crochet through those two loops, okay? And that's an amigurumi decrease. Now, if you just want to do a normal single crochet decrease, no problem, okay? But let's just do that one more time. So single crochet in the next two stitches, one single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then we've got our decrease. So insert your hook into the front loop only of the next stitch, and then directly into the front loop only of the next stitch. And then you'll work your single crochet through those two, those two loops, okay? So you can see that, especially with this yarn, this yarn's really forgiving because of the, the mulled effect, but you can see, you can barely see those decreases, okay? Single crochet decreases, you can tend to see them more obviously, but with this method, you can, you know, you can barely see them at all. So go ahead and uh, finish off your, this round with your decreases, decreasing in every third stitch if you're in the same situation as me. You might be decreasing in every fourth stitch if you um, went for an extra increase at the beginning. You might be decreasing in every second stitch if you didn't increase as far as I did. Okay, so keep going to the end of this round and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm just putting my last decrease in this round. So my last two stitches, decreasing here. So I've, I've decreased down to 18 stitches. So once again, you might have a different number, but for me, I've decreased down to 
18. So I'll just slip stitch there to finish out that round. Remark. So now for the next round, you're going to just place one single crochet in each of your stitches. Now you can start stuffing any time from here. I might just add a little bit of stuffing. And um, as I said at the beginning, you can add a bell, you could add a little um, pebble just to weight your weight your mouse. Say you want it to sit you know, upright, you could add a little pebble down in the bottom so it'll just weight it a little bit. Um, yeah, you could add um, some catnip, some dried catnip, a catnip spray, anything you want here. I'm going to just stuff a little bit here, just down in the base. And I've stuffed my tail in there already, my tail's down in there. And I'm just going to stuff just a little bit in, so definitely not fully stuffed yet. But I'll just, you know, I'll just begin with my stuffing. And so the next round you're going to, as I said, just place one single crochet in each stitch. So go ahead and finish that out. So I'll be, I've got 18 stitches, so I'll place one single crochet in each of my 18 and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've finished that round with just one single crochet in each, oh, moving my table, sorry about that. Um, one single crochet in each stitch. Now you're going to do the next round as a decrease round. And um, you've probably realized the pattern by now, but as you decrease down to the nose, no matter how many stitches you've got, you do one round of decrease, one round of single crochet in each stitch, one round of decrease, one round of single crochet in each stitch. Now I'm going to decrease in my next round down to 12 stitches, and then I'm going to do one round of single crochet, one in each of those 12 stitches. Okay, so I'm going to do the next two rows off camera. So as I said, I'm going to next round is a decrease round. The next round is just one single crochet in each of, for me, will be 12 stitches. Okay, so you'll just decrease in that way until you get down to six stitches. Okay, so I'm going to finish off the next two rounds and I'll see you soon. So, and sorry, just to mention, I'm decreasing in this round for me, is it, um, the decrease is in every second stitch. Okay, so I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm down to 12 stitches there, and I'm going to add some more stuffing now. So I've got, so I've done my one round to decrease down to 12 from my 18, and then I've decreased I've, sorry, I've done my uh, round of one single crochet in each stitch. And now I've just got one more decrease down to six stitches. Okay, so you'll decrease however you're decreasing down to finally getting six stitches. Okay, so I'll just stuff. So, you know, you make your, you'll make your mouse nice and plump. But, you know, don't overstuff. And this is why I've used a smaller hook here too, is that I can kind of stuff pretty, you know, pretty plump without the stuffing showing through the stitches because the stitches are really close together because I've used a smaller hook than normally would be called for for this yarn. So I'm going to stuff. So I've got a nice plump little mouse for Melba. Now what I tend to do as well is I preview... Um, preview one end being sort of a flatter side so my mouse can sit and it tends to be the the side where I've um, I've you know each round ends just kind of more naturally sits flatter so what I tend to do is I plump up that top bit a little bit more the the side that's opposite where I want my mouse to sit a little bit flat so just to show you on this one see how I've kind of just I haven't done anything to flatten it out other than just kind of arrange the stuffing so the stuffing sort of comes out more on this top side. So it just allows your mouse to sit flat. I'm on a sloped surface right now so it won't sit flat, but it, it does sit flat. Um, so, you know, the mouse sits upright. So that I'll, that's what I'll do again. So I just want this bottom bit to be kind of flattened out and I'll stuff a little bit more up here. But I'm going to just finish up my stuffing. I'm pretty close anyway. And then I'm going to do my one last round of decreases. So I'm decreasing from 12 down to 6. So I'm decreasing in every stitch. 
Okay, so you finish off your decreases. Make sure before you finish out this, this final decrease round that you are fully stuffed. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the end of this round and I'll show you how we'll finish it off uh, using our sewing needle. Now, just to mention, it can get quite fiddly down here in this final decrease round. So a little trick that you can use if you're really struggling with how fiddly it is, is you can change to a smaller sized hook and you might find that a little bit easier to work each of your decreases. Okay, and just be careful that you don't skip a stitch with this last round. It can be quite easy just to miss one. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna finish this out. I'm nearly done with my decreases. That's my first three. I've just got um, a few more to go and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, there, I've finished off that round and I can leave out my uh, stitch marker now. Now, we're going to finish off, like I said, with our needle, but um, what we need to think about here is our uh, making our tail. Okay, now we need to, and if this is just too tricky and hard to get your head around, then don't worry, we can just attach your tail later. But what I'm going to uh, recommend that you do is you transition from this end down to the tail end uh, straight away. Okay, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to have a little think about how long you want your tail to be. And my tail, I think, I can't remember how many stitches I did. I think it might have been 17, 17 chains. And I'm going to leave, and now, like I said, if this is just too tricky for you to get your head around, don't worry about it. You'll just attach your tail um, using two ends, okay? So if, if you want to keep your tail as one, as part of this whole mouse, what you'll do is you'll pull out your hook, and you need to allow a good amount in your tail so that you'll be able to finish off your tail. And you'll have to guess a little bit according to how long you want your tail to be. And, um, you know, like I said, if, if you're an absolute beginner and this is just too hard to get your tail, sorry, your tail around, to get your head around, then don't worry. Just pull out enough yarn that you can finish sewing your, your nose closed and uh, just you know weave your tail in and then you'll just start your tail with a fresh piece of yarn but if you want to try and keep everything attached and just make a seamless transition then have a guess about how much yarn you're going to need for your tail okay so if you want a shorter tail you'll need you'll need less yarn if you want a longer tail obviously you'll need to allow more yarn and uh, yeah, it's kind of tricky to guess. You, um, if you're an absolute beginner, it can be a bit tricky. So I'm going to allow a good amount for my tail and I'll snip off here now. Now, just to give you an idea, let's say how much have I allowed there? I've allowed a good probably meter and a half. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take so it is a bit more, perhaps a bit more fiddly to do it this way, and it needs a little bit more, um, you know, sort of looking ahead. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, thread my needle, my larger needle, with my tail end. And then what we're going to do to finish off this nose area is we're going to sew uh, stitches to finish off the, the uh, nose. So you've got six stitches here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sew stitches. So we're going to pick up the front loop of the first stitch. And you've got this long tail, so you'll have to just sort of work it, work it through. And then just pick up, and you can pick up a couple at a time if you want to. And we're just going to sew that nose shut. And just to, just to shape it a little bit. So it's a long tail, so you have to, you know, just pull it all the way through. And then I'm going to go again. So yeah, don't worry if you if you haven't done this long tail. As long as you've got enough just to sew this end and weave in your tail end, you can just start from scratch with your tail. It's no big deal. So you're just going to shape your nose. 
So you want, you know, a little bit pointy, but not too pointy. But you know, you this is these are these are little design decisions that you'll get to make now. You just want to close that up. So yeah, I'm getting, I'm kind of happy with that. And I might just need to move my stitching, uh, my stuffing around a little bit. And you can go around a couple of times, just continue around. This is my second round here. Just go through there, I think. One more time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work our yarn down to the tail area, but not through the center of the tail, okay? We're going to come out just to the side of the tail. So insert your, your needle. Now, if you're just weaving in your tail end, you'll just come out somewhere in the body and you'll just pull your yarn through, okay, and snip off your excess. Otherwise, if you're going to just go straight down to making your tail, come out just somewhere to the side of the tail. Now you can do this in two steps if your needle's not long enough. You can sort of come out, come out at the base somewhere. I think my needle's not going to be quite long enough to come through with my little piece of rubber. So um, if you haven't seen this, I just have this little rubber thing that helps pull my needle. Because of our warm climate here in Marseille, my hands sometimes get a bit get a bit um, slippery, so that just helps me pull my needle through. So I've just I'm doing this in in two stages. So I'm just going to pull it through there. So that's my nose, and then I'm going to weave my yarn down and just come out to the side of the tail. Okay. To the the very bottom so I'm just so you can see that that's my center point there and I'm just at the just to the side of it okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my crochet hook and insert it right into the into the bottom and then I'm going to come up where my yarn is and pull pull up a loop from there now this can be a little bit fiddly, but get your get your needle in there, your sorry, your hook in there, and around your yarn and pull up pull up your loop. Okay? And then tighten that loop on your hook. Okay, so once you've got your your loop on your hook, you'll just chain to the length that you want your tail to be. Um, so if you're not doing it this way, you'll just make a slip knot onto your hook and you'll create your chain from there. Just leave enough tail that you can weave into your mouse. Okay, and then you'll create your chain. Now, completely up to you how long you make your tail. So I'm chaining with this yarn and hook size and for the length of tail that I want, I'm chaining 17. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Now, you, there's a few different decisions you can make about your tail. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, so what I've done here is I've made a kind of a medium curly tail. Okay, and I'll show you how to do this sort of tail, but we'll also mention a couple of ways that you can uh, modify this if you want to. So ignore that first chain from your hook and just make a slip stitch in the next. Now if you want that medium curly tail like mine, you'll make a single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in the next. Okay, And then you'll just repeat that. So single crochet, one single crochet and then two single crochets in the next chain. And that will give you a kind of a medium curl to your tail. If you want a more curly tail, what you'll do is you'll place your slip stitch and then you'll place two single crochets in each chain and that will give you more of a curl to your tail. If you don't want a curly tail, you'll place uh, just one single crochet in each stitch and or each chain and you might get a slight curl to the ta tail but it won't be 
you know, it won't be as curly as this. Okay, so you could place one single crochet in each in each chain, or you could even just do one slip stitch in each chain if you want quite a narrow tail, which still might have a little little sort of curl in it, but um, you know, it'll be narrower. So you can choose any one of those options depending on how you want your tail to look. So I'm placing one single crochet and then two single crochet in the next chain. So I'm going to finish out that until the end of my tail. So you do the same and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm just placing my last single crochet in that last chain. So you can see I've kind of got that medium curly tail again. And it's actually, I think it might be a little bit shorter than the one I made before. I don't know, maybe it's about the same. Okay. Anyway, the ta you know, the tail length is entirely up to you. Now I've left plenty of yarn, which is good. I've left, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit over left over, but I'm going to yarn over and pull through and just leave enough tail to weave into my mouse. So I'll just tie off there. And so I've just got one end, because I did that work through from the nose, I've just got this one end to work in. But you might have two ends if you've uh, just done, you know, you just made a slip stitch and then made a chain, uh, sorry, slip knot and then made a chain from there. You might have two tails to use to attach your tail to your mouse. Two yarn tails. Lots of tails. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave this up through the stuffing and bring it through so my tail is nice and secure on there and you can you know you can weave it with this yarn it's really easy to hide my tails but if you want to um, skip over and, and go down again just make sure it's on nice and securely you can I'm just going to weave in this tail one more time just go one more one more direction change and like I said this yarn it's really easy to hide hide the you know some stitches so I can just kind of pull that in you can't see where that you can't see where that little overlap is so then I'm just going to snip off that end and then what you can do if there's a little bit of end poking through and again this yarn hides things really well you can just poke that back into the back into the mouse so there's your little tail. Now, um, once again, you can decide which is going to be your bottom. Where is my bottom? Yeah, that's my bottom there. So you can just flatten that out a little bit. So you've got your your mouse with your little tail with the tail, and we're going to move on now and make the ears. Okay, so to make your ears, and of course you'll make two of them. You're going to so leave a little bit of extra tail. Actually, not for this part. Sorry. No, you don't need to. No, you just need to leave enough for uh, weaving in. So what you'll do here is you'll just make a magic ring, just as before. And then you're going to, once again, place six single crochets in your ring. And you'll notice that I've switched to my pink, which is the inner color for my ears. And you might just continue on with your same yarn, no problem. And... I'm just going to place my six single crochets into the ring. That's two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm going to pull my ring closed and then slip stitch into my first stitch. So we're just, just as we started with the mouse, we're doing exactly the same beginning with these ears. And I'll slip stitch there. Now, once again, you can mark your stitches if you want to. I'm not going to bother here. I'm just going to work one more, one more round. And you can, you know, you can make your ears the size that you want. But for the size that I want for my ears, I'm just going to increase in the round. So this round will be two single crochets in each of those six stitches to give me a total of 12 and I'll meet you once we get round to the end and then we're going to unless you want to go for another round of increases what we're going to do is we're going to change color 
to the main body color for the outer part of the ears and what that does is it also just helps to sort of make this little little dip in the ear okay so um, finish off this second round and your two single crochets in each of your six stitches and I'll meet you at the end of this round and we're going to change color when we get to the end so I'll see you soon okay so just placing my last two single crochets in that sixth stitch and now what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch or at least start our slip stitch into that that first stitch so insert your your hook and here's where we're going to change color and I'm going to use the the length that I had left over for this first ear from my tail so I'm just going to leave, what you're going to do is just leave a little bit of extra tail than you would normally leave, okay, because we're going to use that to sew on our ear. And you'll place your yarn over your hook, and you'll finish the slip stitch using that new yarn, okay, so you'll slip stitch to change colour. So your slip stitch that you would do at the end of this round, you'll just do it using your new colour, okay. And then you can, of course, snip off the end of your inner color. If you, if you, you know, if you're just using the same color for your ears, you don't need to do this color change. But snip off your inner ear color, and then you'll chain one, and then you're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch, working your way around. Okay, so you've got 12 stitches, and if you've increased, you might, again, you might, and you want bigger ears, you might have, um, you know, you might have 18 stitches, but most likely you're going to have 12, and you'll just place one single crochet in each of those 12 stitches, and that, like I said, will give you most likely, well, it will give you a, like this, see the shape of these ears, so it kind of just curls them in on itself. And so you get this nice little, this little cute ear shape. So I'll meet you once I've done the one single crochet in each stitch. And I'll meet you around here. Okay, so just placing my last single crochet in that last stitch. Now what I will do here is I'm just going to pull out my yarn. I'm not going to, I'm not going to yarn over and pull through. I'm just going to pull out my yarn and I'm going to... Place my needle or thread my needle with the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly further shape my shape my ear by just sewing across. I just want to kind of just close off this bottom end a little bit so I get a little a little extra shape to my ear. So I'm just going to come back and go down into that first stitch with my needle and draw these two ends together of my of my ear so I give it even see how I just kind of pull it down a little bit at the base and it just gives you that that really cute little ear shape and then I'll just perhaps I'll just go back so you know you just do this how you how you feel I'm just gonna go what will I do here let's just go one more time Actually, I don't even think I need to. Once I've just drawn that through, what I think I'm going to do here, and if I remember rightly, that's what I did last time, I'm just going to snip off, snip off, you know, my tail end. And I'm going to tie a knot, actually, between these two tail ends. So I've just stitched across to draw that, those bottom two ends of the ear together. And then I'm just going to tie a knot and further bring it together just with this, these two tail ends like so so see how that kind of has shaped my ear and then what we'll do of course is weave in these two tail ends into the into the back here so you know I usually assume that you have um, these skills under your belt where you'll just weave in your tail end but let's just do one together and so you'll just do this as neatly as you can. Weave it into the back there. So you're just weaving into the single crochet stitches and you'll do both of your tails. Just make them nice and secure. 
as best you can. So I'm going to finish off weaving in these tails off camera. I'm going to go ahead and make my second ear in exactly the same way. And then what we've got left to do is, of course, attaching our ears onto uh, our little mouse. And then also embroidering on a little a little uh, face if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all of that off camera, make my second ear, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so there I've got my two ears, and somehow they never look exactly the same, uh, even when I do the same thing. But, you know, that's the beauty of handmade. <laughs> so anyway, that one looks just slightly bigger. I guess it's not, but anyway. So it is. So... Now we're going to attach the ears to the mouse. So you will have decided which is your underside, which is your top side. Now you can, um, you know, you can place little pins, little markers, whatever you want to do where you want your ears to be placed. What I tend to do is I tend to just, so I'll take one of the ears and one of the tails, just thread my needle. And I just tend to um, place them on one at a time, just so I can, um, you know, if I need to adjust where I place them, I can quite easily. So I'm going to place these ones back just slightly from where I placed my last ones. So I just bring my, you know, my yarn through on the first ear, just one of the tail ends, I just bring that through. Okay, and then I go to my other ear, so that's not permanent, nothing permanent there. And I just make sure that I get the other ear placed, you know, symmetrically. So I've got that one there, it's on that line there, so I think it's going to be about there. And then I'll push that one through. And then what I can do is I can reassess before I, you know, make any permanent, permanent attachment. So I can kind of assess where I'm at. So yeah, I think that's pretty good to symmetrical. So just pull that through a little bit. So yeah, so you can easily just pull the ear out if it's not exactly where you want it to be. Okay. So yeah, I think I'm, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. So then what I can do is I can take my other tail, my other tail on each ear and thread that through. So, you know, this is just a way to help keep it symmetrical. Now you can just, you know, thread them down and through, or you can come back up into the ear if you feel like they need to be even more secure you can come back up into the ear and attach them even, you know, more firmly. So you can come back up into the ear, so up through here, which I think I'm going to do. Just go do one. My little piece of rubber. I think it's probably actually might come out the back. No, no, that's good. No, that's good. Pull that through. That might take a bit of wiggling. So yeah, if you if you feel happy with them just being, you know, just being secured by pulling the tail down. Let's just pull that, that down and this tail. So yeah, that, it just makes them just a little bit more secure. And then what I'll do is I'll come back down and out through my trusty, trusty rubber and pull that through. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off my placing my ears off camera. So you can see that's nice and secure there now. See, compared to this one, it's a little bit wiggly, although I haven't done the other tail, but you can see that that's much more secure. So 
you know if you want to do that then you certainly can and then all you need to do is just snip off these tail ends but I'm going to go ahead and finish the other if, attaching the other ear off camera and then we'll come back and and I'll show you what I do for the nose and the eyes um, yeah and you know it's entirely up to you if you want to want to put the the nose and the eyes on there so I'll see you in a moment after I've attached this second ear Okay, so there my ears are on, and of course I'm just going to snip off all those tail ends and poke any excess down into the mouse. So my ears are nice and secure there and relatively symmetrical. So now if you want to make a little face, take some of your pink yarn. Now... Again, this is, you know, how you do this, exactly how you do it, you know, how you make the nose look. It's entirely up to you. Now, what I did, let's just show you my other one. What I did with this one is I just did a few little um, one directional strips. And what I'm going to do is something slightly different for this mouse. And I just want to show you, a, you know, a couple of options of how you want how you know you can make this look so you want to get right on the end where you finished the nose there what I'm going to do is I'm going to do little crisscrosses this time so I'm just going to bring my needle up and through and I'm just going to do a couple of crisscrosses in different directions across the nose so as I said, I went in only in one direction last time. I just wove a few strands in one direction. But this time I'm going to do them in a few different directions. Come across the nose like that. If I can get my needle up in there. I'm going to need my, need my rubber. It's very handy, this little piece of rubber awesome in our climate here so you can see I've just got a couple of different directions and I can go in different directions with the other strand as well but for now let's just do one more one more with this one we have a let go let's bring it down down here so this you know this like I said is it completely up to you how you do this actually what I might do is I might just switch over to the other one let's just cut cut that off my main ball and I'll just do a couple of direct ones with this other one other tail I'll just see if I can get it looking how I want it to look. So yeah, just to go back to this one. So if you can see, I just went all in that same direction with that little that little pink nose. And this one, let's bring this one up here and down in there. So just continue on. I'm going to finish this off camera, just making a stylized little pink nose, getting it to look how I want it to look. Yeah, it's not too bad. And I might bring that one just back down there. You can see, so you can sort of see. I've just kind of crisscrossed it. And let's go back. Yeah, let's go back to this one. And then, of course, you'll just, you know, finish off these ends by weaving them down into your mouse once again through the stuffing, just as you've been doing. Let's just do one crisscross over here. And I think that's going to end my nose. So, yeah, let, um, I'll finish this off camera. You, you make your little nose and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I am by no means an expert at embroidery, but I think that will do. Just snip off those ends. So I've just worked them through the mouse. So if you can see I've just got a little, a little pink nose. 
So, you know, you can stop here at this point. You don't have to, once again, add the eyes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some eyes. So just take your, your darker color or whatever color you're using for your eyes. And, you know, again, it's just, you know, it's up to you how you want to, how you want to style them. I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller than my last one. So I think I'll just do just one, oops, just one little, oh, let me thread that again. So I think I'm just going to do like quite small eyes, just one little strand of, strand of yarn. So I'm going to go, so where will I want to place them? It's one here and then one over here. So I'm just going to go through up and through and then I'm just going to come come back so these are just going to be really small little eyes on this one and you know there's different ways you can you can make the eyes but I think we'll just do for this one I'll just finish that tail and then I'm just going to bring it down one more time okay so I'm just going to finish off those eyes so I'm just going to um, bring that strand down and through and then that's going to be my eye and I'm going to complete one on the other side so I'll see you once I've done that so there's my first eye done and I can just snip off those snip off those ends and I'll complete my second eye okay so there's my finished little mouse and my first one so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's one for those folks who don't want to dress up their cats. So I tried to, uh, you know, mix it up a little bit. And um, this is a very cute little toy and Melba's going to love them. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I would love to see your photos of how your mouse has turned out or see your cat playing with the mouse if you want to send along a video. You can uh, either send them to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So I'd love to see how your little uh, mice have turned out. So uh, thanks very much for being here and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Good girl. Good girl. What do you think of your mouse? Look, what do you think of your mouse? <laughs> Another time maybe, huh? <laughs>